hook, line and sinker. When anyone produces his proof, what do we do? You verify the proof. You verify the identity. So we have to read the Bible and check whether the Burhan is truthful or not. Have we done it? Believe me, these Christian missionaries, they read, they read our Quran and they are making life miserable for us. They come knocking at our doors throughout the world. In every part of the world, they come knocking at our doors and they say, that see, it is mentioned in your Holy Quran that the Bible is the word of God. I mean, most of us Muslims will, be, will say yes. The Holy Quran says that Bible is the word of God. So the next question is, why don't you follow the Bible? Believe me, we have no answer. They come knocking at our doors and they say that your beloved prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him, he is mentioned by name in the Holy Quran only five times. But the name of Jesus peace be upon him is mentioned 25 times. Who is greater? These missionaries, they don't give you the answer. They let your mind think. They don't give you the answer. They only pose the question, who is greater? And they pose the next question. That Muhammad peace be upon him, he had a mother and father. We Muslims will say yes. He had a mother and a father. Did Jesus peace be upon him? Did he have a father? We say no. Yes, he had a mother. Mother Mary, may Allah be pleased with her. But we believe that he was born without any male intervention. He had no father. So who is the father of Jesus peace be upon him? They ask the question. They don't give the answer, but they let your mind think. Who is greater? A person who has a father and mother or a person who has a mother but no father? Who is greater? They ask you the question, but they don't give you the answer. They let your mind think. They come knocking at our doors. They say that, did your beloved prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him, did he give life to the dead? We say yes, we believe in many of his miracles, but we don't know of any in which he gave life to the dead. Did Jesus peace be upon him according to you? Did he give life to the dead? We say yes, it's mentioned in the Quran. He said, Bismillah, wake up in the name of Allah. So who's greater? Who's greater of the two? They don't give you the answer. They let your mind think. They use as Muslims as a punching bag. They use as Muslims as the doormats. They keep on posing questions. They ask the question that your beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is he dead or alive? He says, see, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is Hayatul Nabi. Spiritually, he is alive. But as no, physically, is he dead or alive? We have to agree that physically he is dead. He is buried in Medina. Jesus, peace be upon him. Is he dead or alive? We believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was raised up alive. So who is greater? They ask you the question. They don't give you the answer. They let your mind think. They are using us as punching bags, as doormats. We are scapegoats. And believe me, we are supposed to be the people who are supposed to dawah, propagation. But these people, they are so dedicated, even with the falsehood, they are so firm. The maximum missionaries that we we'll find in any religion is in Christianity. They are making life miserable for us. What are we to do? Shouldn't we make an effort to correct these people? And Quran gives you a way how to do the job. The answer to all these questions is given clearly in the Holy Quran. But how many of us read the Quran with understanding? The Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64. It says, Qul, ya ahil al-kitab, say, O people of the book, ta'ala wila kalmitin sawa im bainan o bainukum, that come to come in terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'muda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. Wala nushika bihi, that we associate to partners with Him. 
wala yatakiza bazun bazun arbaban min dunillah that we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than allah fa in tawalla if then they turn back faqulu shadu say we bear witness we are not muslimun that we are muslims bowing our will to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this was of the holy quran of surah al imran chapter number 3 verse number 64 is a master key for dawa it shows you a way how to do dawa with the ahli kitab with the jews and christians if it works for the hindus use it if it works for the sikhs use it it's a master key it says tala wala qalmatin sawa'in bainana wa bainakum that come to common terms as between us and you which is the first term allah na'budu illa allah that we worship none but allah wala nushrika bihi that we associate to partner with him we have to open our mouths we have to do the job but we muslims we are intelligent we are intelligent in making excuses we say that see i don't have enough knowledge we pass the buck on that since we don't have enough knowledge we are not the fittest people to do dawa dawa is somebody else's job our beloved prophet said balligo anni wala aya that propagate even if it be one verse means even if you know one verse about islam it's your duty to propagate it i want to know that which muslim in this world does not know one verse about islam <coughs> every muslim he has to at least know one verse about islam he at least has to know la ilaha illallah that there is no god but allah whatever he knows it's his duty to convey the message to those people who do not know it see we go to the mosque and we pray and when we pray our imam he reads after surah fatiha in the salah he reads qul huwa allah ahad say is allah one and only allah hu samad allah the absolute the eternal lam yalid wa lam yulad he begat not nor is he begotten wa lam yaqul lahu kuffan ahad and there is nothing unto him like in this world the qari saying the imam he is reading qul huwa allah ahad say he is allah one and only i want to know that the muslims that come in the mosque do they not believe that allah is one and only of course they believe so what is the message we are getting in our salah we are getting the message that kul huwa allah ahad say he is allah one and only we have to go out and say to those people who do not believe that god is one we have to tell them that god is one irrespective whether you can convince them or not your job is to deliver the message the quran says in surah ghashiya chapter number 88 verse number 21 fazakkir inna man ta muzakkir that your job is to deliver the message your job is to do zikr whether they accept or not you leave it in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your job is to deliver the message whatever you know if you know there is one god tell your non muslim friend that there is one god there is one allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he ask you for proof how can you prove that there is one god how can you prove the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the moment you do not know the answer what do you do you come home and you do the homework you find out the answer that how can you prove the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can you prove that there is one god almighty and believe me now you don't have to do much of research everything is available on your fingertips now science and technology has advanced i had given a talk a few months ago in bombay on is the quran the word of god and i've proved logically and scientifically even to the atheist the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you only have to get the answer and repeat it the moment you find the answer and when you tell your friend that see this is the answer how you can prove the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can you prove that there is one god almighty and after he's convinced you are a master of one question